I kept having the same nightmare when I moved out of my parents' house. Now I know why. Written by Sam Haysom. Featuring Pumpkin Queen. September 27, 2019. From Fred Dosworth to Cynthia Dosworth. Mom, the dreams are getting worse. I don't know what it is. I never thought moving out and going to uni would bother me too much. But maybe I am homesick after all. <laughs> homesick? Me? Can you imagine? I know you'll be worried reading that, but admit it, you're just a tiny bit pleased too, aren't you? I may be 18, but I guess I'm not as tough or as immune to missing the family as I thought I was. <sighs> and I do miss you guys. I miss you, and Jim, and the dogs. I'd love to come back and visit ASAP, if I'm honest. But I made a promise with myself that I wouldn't come home for the first six weeks, so I could settle in. I'm going to try and stick to that. These nightmares are making it hard though. Really hard. Every night this week, I've woken up sweating. My duvet wrapped around me like a snake. I can't remember the dreams, but I remember the feeling. It sticks with me. I wake up panicky, with this weight on my chest. A feeling that's half dread, half fear. Like I'm about to sit my A levels again. Only, it's worse than that. Because I end up creeping myself out too. I lie awake and I listen to the noises in the building around me. The tap dripping in my in suite. The hum of the radiator. The distant sound of drunk students. And I get so worked up I can't even shut my eyes again. There's this cupboard in my room that I can see from my bed. And lately I've gotten this idea that... <laughs> But no, I'm being stupid. Why even get worked up about it? It'll get better. Homesickness always goes away in the end. I'll just have to make sure I drink a bit more before I go to bed in the future, right? <laughs> Kidding. Love you. And speak soon. Fred. September 30th, 2019. From Fred Dosworth to... Cynthia Dosworth Mom, another bad one last night. God, I feel like I've barely slept. I don't know if it's the tiredness or the anxiety, but my mind keeps playing tricks on me. Stupid stuff. Last night, for instance, I woke up at 3 a.m. from another nightmare, leaned over to switch on my lamp to get some light in, and the first thing my eyes were drawn to once I could see again was the cupboard in my room. The door of the cupboard. See, the thing is, I remember that cupboard door being shut last night when I went to bed. Fully closed. I'm certain of it. But when I woke up at 3 a.m., it was open. Just a crack. Just enough to show a slither of darkness inside. As I was laying there in bed, I felt like the darkness was staring at me. It sounds stupid, I know. I know exactly what you're going to say, too. You watch too many horror films and read too much Stephen King. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. But even after I shoved the cupboard door shut again, making sure I pushed hard until I heard the mechanism click, I still couldn't relax. Something still felt wrong. The plus side to all of this, I've made a new friend. A girl in my corridor called Fiona. The 3 a.m. club, we're going to call ourselves. <laughs> I found her in our shared kitchen after I gave up on getting any more sleep. She was sitting there in her dress gown, drinking hot chocolate, and she told me she couldn't sleep either. We ended up chatting for hours. I don't know if it was because we were the only two awake or because we both felt like crap, but we really opened up to each other. I told her about my homesickness and my nightmares, and she told me about her depression. She had it since she was a teenager, apparently. 
She's on meds, but it's particularly bad at the moment. Probably because of all the changes in her life. You see, Mom, I guess I can't complain too much. I might be homesick, and I might be struggling to sleep, but at least I'm not depressed, right? It can always be worse. I went to bed around 6 a.m. in the end. First thing I did when I was back in my room was check the cupboard door. It was still shut tight. I think I'm working myself up over nothing. Love you, and speak soon. Fred October 2nd, 2019 From Fred Dotsworth To Cynthia Dotsworth Mom, I finally remembered it what the nightmare was. I'm writing this now at 3.30 a.m. as a way of distracting myself so I don't keep staring at that stupid freaking cupboard and... <sighs> no, don't. Start from the beginning. Start with last night. <sighs> okay, right. Here goes. Sorry I'm a bit all over the place, but I ended up going out with the people on my corridor. And I guess I had a bit too much to drink. I wasn't planning on it, Mom, but as soon as I started, I... Well, I guess this homesickness is a lot worse than I thought it was. Because I didn't want to stop. I just kept going. I must still be a bit drunk too, because I keep glancing up at the cupboard as I'm writing this, watching it out of the corner of my eye. And I swear I can't... No, no. Concentrate. One thing at a time. Last night. Last night's a blur, if I'm honest. I remember getting a taxi into town with the others, and I remember getting shots. I remember Fiona pulling me to one side to tell me she was worried about me. After that, I have a vague memory of being in a taxi on my own, and then struggling to get the key into the lock of my bedroom door. I must have fallen asleep on the bed, because the next thing I remember... The next thing I remember is lying on my back, staring up at the ceiling. The room spinning around me. It was dark, and I could hear laughter in the distance. Laughter and screams. I don't know if I was awake or dreaming, but it felt real. That was the thing. My mouth was dry and tacky, and my throat burned with the aftertaste of tequila. My head ached, and the dream... That's what I know it was now, Mom. Just a dream. I decided I needed some water. Something to take the taste in my mouth away. Only as I leaned over to reach for the glass on my bedside table, I heard another noise. Something closer. Something on the far side of my room. I remember sitting up in bed, squinting. I've got those blackout blinds on my window, and they only let in the tiniest bit of moonlight. So the room was almost pitch black. I could make out faint shapes, but not much else. I could hear the noise though. Oh yes, as I stared into the darkness of my room, I could hear it. A soft scratching sound. coming from the direction of the cupboard. I'm writing this now with the lights on, but even the memory of that noise creeps me out. It sounded so real, Mom. Like there was an animal in my cupboard trying to get out. In fact, the only reason I know for sure that it wasn't real, that it really was just a dream, was because of what happened next. What happened after. In the dream, I was sitting up, staring into the darkness, and I could just make out the edge of the cupboard door. My heart was beating so hard, I could feel it up in my throat. I couldn't move. And as I stared at the cupboard, as I listened to the scritch, scritch, scritch going on, I heard something else too. A voice. A voice on the other side of the cupboard door whispering my name. 
I know, I know, I know how it sounds. Classic horror movie crap, right? But you've got to understand how real this nightmare felt at the time. I was in my bed and it sounded like that voice was calling out to me. Like it knew my name. Freddy. Freddy. The last thing I remember before I woke up was the cupboard door beginning to creak open. <laughs> Jesus, that's enough of that anyway. I'm creeping myself out again. I'm writing this at my desk, but I've angled my laptop towards the cupboard so I don't have my back to it. I can't stop staring at the thing. I keep imagining I can hear those noises behind it again. It's nonsense, of course. Whenever I stop typing, there's only silence. Except... Except the thing is, after I woke up from that nightmare, the first thing I did was head to the kitchen. I could tell you it was because I wanted a snack, but really it was to see if Fiona was home yet, if maybe she was awake too and unable to sleep. When I found the kitchen empty though, I eventually wandered back to my room, and when I sat down at this desk, I noticed the cupboard door was open again. Only a crack. It's like that thing is doing its best to scare the shit out of me. Because I could have sworn I shut it before I went out drinking last night. <sighs> Maybe the mechanism needs fixing or something. Anyway, I'm going to bed now. I just heard the others come back. And I think I'll go and chat with them for a bit. If I sit in the silence of my room any longer, I'm going to lose it. Fred. October 4th, 2019. From Fred Dotsworth to Cynthia Dotsworth. I wish this feeling in my chest would go away. I wish it would stop. It's there almost all the time now. Not just when I wake up at night, but in the day too. A solid weight. It extends down into my stomach one way and reaches up to my throat the other. Like that feeling you get before you start crying. A blockage around the Adam's apple. I wish I could see you, because I know you'd say the right thing to make it better. October 11th, 2019. From Fred Dotsworth to Cynthia Dotsworth. I told Fiona about the cupboard, Mom. I had to. It's been getting to me so much over the past week, I've barely slept at all. Each day feels like a blur. I've missed lectures, I've missed seminars, I've... Well, I'm not myself. Something's wrong. I know something's wrong. I'm not trying to hide from it, it's just that... It's just what the fuck am I supposed to tell people? That there's something scratching in my cupboard and whispering my name at night? And even though it started off as a nightmare, I can no longer tell when I'm fucking dreaming and when I'm awake! What would people say if I told them that exactly? They think I was crazy. They think I'm losing it. I think I might be losing it. Last night was the final straw. Breaking point. I had the same nightmare I've been having for the past few weeks, only this time, when I woke up, I could still hear the scratching sound. And I know I could hear it. And rather than lying in bed listening to that shit on my own, I thought enough was enough. I'd had it. So I went into the kitchen to find Fiona, and when I couldn't find her there, I banged on her door until she opened it. She answered in her dressing gown, bags around her eyes, confused. I told her to come with me, and although she kept asking questions, she came in the end. She came to my room to look at the cupboard. I stood back in the doorway like a little kid, and asked Fiona to check inside it because I felt like I was going to lose my fucking mind if I heard those noises one more time. And she did. She checked it. The door creaked open when she pulled the handle, and from where I was standing, I couldn't see inside, but I could see Fiona frown. I could see her staring into the shadows behind the door, 
her eyes darting left to right, not saying anything. And as I watched her, I felt this dread building in my stomach. This dread that was maybe worse than anything I've ever felt before in my life. Well? Fiona said after a moment. You're not going to win any prizes for tidiness anytime soon. But I can't see any rats. Rats? I said back. Yeah, rats. Maybe that scratching is coming from upstairs. Or next door? I didn't understand what she meant. So I stepped up beside her and looked in the cupboard. There were rows of shirts on their hangers and shoes on the carpet below. A wooden trunk towards the back. Nothing else. October 13th, 2019. From Fred Dotsworth to Cynthia Dotsworth. Mom, the good moments don't come often. But when they do, I grab hold of them. I grab them tight. Right now it's the middle of the day, and it's sunny outside. My blinds are open, and the light's coming in. My head feels okay. The tightness in my chest is still there, but it's not as bad as it usually is. The cupboard's quiet. There's a question that keeps popping into my head, Mom. A question I don't like to think about because I might already know the answer. I have to ask it though. If something crawls out of the cupboard one night and gets me while I'm sleeping, will anybody miss me as much as you? I don't think they would. I don't think so. Ah, uh, but the sun's in my face. I can feel it as I type. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of those long weekend dog walks we used to take with Jim at the beginning of the summer. The two dogs and the three of us exploring the new forest with the sun on our faces. I think those walks were the last time I felt properly happy. October 15, 2019 From Fred Dotsworth to Cynthia Dotsworth I can't do this anymore. I can't. It's in my fucking head. It's 3 a.m. and I'm in bed. The lights are on and I'm playing music loud. But even below all that, even below the sound of someone banging on a door in the distance, I can hear it. I can still hear it. The voice from the cupboard. Freddy. Freddy. It's calling out to me, but I don't know what it wants. I don't know why it won't leave me alone. I think if I don't confront it head on, Mom, it never will. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to open the door. October 15, 2019. From Fred Dotsworth to Cynthia Dotsworth. It's you, Mom. Oh God, it's you! I'm trying to look through these photos, but I can't see properly. I can't concentrate either, because someone's crying somewhere, and there's this music and the banging on my door won't stop. The trunk. It was all in the trunk. All this. When I finally tugged that cupboard door open, there was no monster on the other side. There were only clothes and shoes and this trunk. The scratching was coming from inside the trunk. But when I finally opened it, I didn't see a monster in there. No mice or rats. Just photos. A memorial pamphlet. A death certificate. I don't understand. <sighs> Fuck, how am I supposed to read over all this noise? These pages are all wet. It was Fiona that found me in the end. She was the one banging on my door that night last October. The one who eventually called security to come and open it. She told me later that she'd been worried about me for weeks. And that night, 
Even over the music I was playing, she could still hear me crying. When they finally got in, they found me sat on my bed with a wooden trunk open in front of me. Papers spread across the duvet, photos mainly. I had a picture clutched so tight in one hand that Fiona had to pry my fingers open to get it. A little boy and a woman smiling at the camera. Cynthia with Freddy, age six, read the caption on the back. She'd only been dead two weeks when I came to uni. It was a car accident. Sudden. I remember that now. With the help of my counselor, who I've been seeing for the past five months, I've remembered a lot. I remember how Jim, my stepdad, tried to stop me from going to uni at all. Said he didn't think it was a good idea. Told me to think about taking a year off instead. Give myself time to grief. I told him I was fine. Even though I didn't feel it. Even though I felt like my frickin' head was tethered to my body like a balloon. In those weeks I spent in my room at the university, there's still a blur. I remember drinking and playing music and locking myself away for hours on end. But I don't remember much else. Still, I've got those emails. All those emails I sent to mom's old address. I don't remember sending them, but they're there. In my outlook, a reminder, a reminder of just how low and how desperate I must have been. Those emails were hard to read at first, but I got through them in the end. I read them all. Now when I reread them, I don't see the words of a crazy person. I see the words of someone who misses his mom so much he found a way to convince himself she was still there. I see the words of a person who was trying to protect himself, but only ended up doing damage. I'm not going to damage myself anymore. When my mom died, I took everything I had, all my feelings and memories, and I locked them away in a trunk. But you can't keep stuff like that locked up forever. The university agreed to let me defer my place, so this year I'm taking time to grieve. I'm taking time to talk with my counselor and walk the dogs with Jim. It's still cold out, but every now and then, on the better days, the sun will push its way through the clouds and touch the skin of my face, making me feel warm again. I still talk to her too, to mom. Only now, instead of emails, I do it out loud when I'm on my own in the quiet moments I have to myself. I tell her about my day and about what I've been doing. I tell her about Jim and the dogs. I tell her I love her. And even though she isn't here anymore, at least in person, I like to think, somewhere, somehow, she's listening. <laughs>